Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a four color assassins deck. So we're going to have some fun with this in the casual play queue today. And one of the main reasons to build an assassin deck in standard, other than it being pretty cool, is a Trata Deadly Fugitive, a three mana one four with death touch, saying whenever an assassin you control deals combat damage to an opponent, cloak the top card of that player's library. So we turn it face down as a two two creature with ward two. And then face down creatures we control can be turned face up for two a blue and a black if we control a Trata and then if we didn't have a creature face down but maybe a land or a spell we still get to cast that spell or play that land for free so a Trata kind of fuels itself but also pairs very nicely with some cheaper assassins so we can maybe play a two mana assassin play a Trata on three and then immediately connect and start cloaking the opponent's cards and some of those two mana assassins include Avon Heartstabber. A 1 1 flyer is especially nice at enabling a Trata as it's more likely to connect. And then this can eventually grow into a 3 3 if we have enough mana values in the graveyard. And also gets to draw a card when it dies, in addition to milling two cards to maybe enable future copies. And then we've got the Pyrotechnic Performer. So we are dipping into four colors total to support all these two mana assassins. But the mana is actually surprisingly functional thanks to both Cavern of Souls and Secluded Courtyard still being in standard, so it's not too difficult to support four callers. And then the Performer also has good synergy with Etracta, since we can play this face down, turn it face up for single red, dealing three damage, great in multiples, but it will also trigger off Etracta, turning some of our cards face up, so that can also deal quite a bit of damage. And then we've got four copies of the Crawl Whipcracker, a 3-2 with reach, and when it enters, gets to destroy target token an opponent controls. So it works against creature tokens, but also blood tokens or treasure tokens. So there's quite a few targets in today's standard. So these are our two drops. And then, of course, at four mana, we need to have a Roaming Throne in our Assassin deck. So now we get to double our triggered abilities. And all our two drops actually have a triggered ability. Some may be more relevant than others. And then Etrata also definitely benefits from Roaming Throne as now for every assassin that hits the opponent we get to cloak two cards so that can also get out of hand pretty quickly and then Massacre Girl, also an assassin, has pretty good synergy alongside removal spells that decrease an opposing creature's toughness, but it can also maybe wither away at the opponent's creatures to eventually take them out. So this is another nice addition, and this also informs our decision on which removal to play in the deck. So that's why we have Disfigure instead of Cut Down, so we can maybe trigger Massacre Girl, and it still mostly hits the same type of creatures. And then a Black Sun's Twilight can be a nice mana sink in the late game, also allowing us to get back a creature from the graveyard and then we've got virtue of persistence good on two mana but also as a seven mana enchantment can maybe recur some of our creatures in the grindier matchups and then at three mana there's a bloodline calling giving minus five minus five to one creature can even take out a shield root with it and then taking out multiple creature tokens can also be relevant especially against the boros convoke deck and then topping off our curve, one Vein Ripper, since it's also a pretty nice assassin, although at six mana it's a little pricey, but does still synergize quite well even with a roaming throne. And then our mana base, as we mentioned, has Cavern, which we'll usually name Assassin, occasionally might name Golem for Roaming Throne, and then there's Courtyard. And then we've got a few try lands, which we don't mind playing early since we don't have many one mana plays to make and can still cycle them later. And then most of our author lands should be entering untapped. One creature land as well, Restless Reef, can also maybe target ourselves to fill the graveyard for Heart Stabber or Virtue of Persistence. And then a few Dark Slick Shores also make sense. And then the Abandoned Mire, another way to mill and maybe get some creatures back. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand, can cast our two drops and we're low to the ground so we're good against aggro against black red whipcracker versus hearts stabber yeah I guess I'll play whipcracker even though our opponent could be playing with a blood tithe harvester whose uh, blood tokens we can destroy speak of the devil Still have a nice turn lined up here as we draw another Whipcracker. So I'll disfigure now even though Massacre Girl could benefit from it. And keep up the pressure. Well, we found a card that can sort of one for one answer a Harvester. Although they need to play it first. 
Preacher has a bit of a roadblock here. So, play Hard Stabber next. Double blocking is a little risky in the face of instant speed removal. As they play another Harvester. And ENT can enable some good attacks. Alright, play Massacre Girl. Probably hang back with everyone in case Heartstabber also needs to block. Don't expect the first Massacre Girl to survive, maybe the second one does. And a Deep Cavern Bat's gonna have a look. Takes Whipcracker, so they don't have any intention of taking out Massacre Girl. And then a Crimson Pulse to refuel. Good synergy with Inti as well. So I don't see them attacking here unless they harvest or take out Whipcracker first. Alright, they take out the Heart Stabber instead. Ooh, Vein Ripper. And a Trata the draw. That's exciting. Yeah, just play a Trata and Smash. They can double block Massacre Girl. But they can't stop us all. Although I guess Whipcracker against Preacher is not the best, although it will still shrink down thanks to Wither. Alright, opponent does double block. Take out Preacher, I think. Sure. So try that triggers twice, and Massacre Girl draws a card. Archfiend, good combo with Inti. They might be playing with the Stormseeker as well to give it haste. In the meantime, Roaming Throne, also good with Etrata. And Takenuma, channeled, also triggering Inti. Goes for another Deep Cavern Bat. And our opponent explodes, so yeah, I mean, the Whipcracker also has reach, so it lines up pretty well. And they're just too far behind. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's reasonable against creature decks with some removal that pairs with Massacre Girl. And then having Heartstabber is good if we top deck Etrata. Put on blue green with a schooner that does dodge our removal here. Next turn we could keep up a Bloodline Culling. Is there a point maybe on a blue-green artifact deck? With now double Siren. It is tempting to uh, wait to fire off our removal until we play Massacre Girl, but we have two more pieces of removal in hand. And then we should be able to Culling the Schooner next turn. So for now we'll take it. All their opponent about to maybe draw on the gate. Nope, puts it in the graveyard. Possible they have another copy in hand, of course. A roaming Throne could also pair well with Massacre Girl. And a Deep Fathom Echo at the beginning of combat. They get to explore and then become a copy. Yeah, I guess we'll take that out instead since Virtue and Twilight won't be able to take it out anytime soon. This is probably more threatening than a schooner. They will crew the schooner with it. And then I'll trade for the Siren. Could have also waited until we play Roaming Throne to maybe draw two cards with a Heart Stabber. Just want to make sure things progress smoothly. And now with Massacre Girl and a bunch of removal in hand, we could uh, start drawing quite a few cards. Ideally, draw an untapped land so we can go Roaming Throne, maybe disfigure the Siren if it's still a 2-2. Two -two. But uh, it's already going to pick up a counter, revealing Blossoming Tortoise. 
Schooner can't attack into the Massacre Girl. So just an attack for three. Okay. Well, we have options. Could also Virtue the Spyglass Siren here. So let me start by attacking in case they have a bounce spell. And does this resolve? It does not negate. So yeah, playing Roaming Throw might have worked out a little bit better. Can still play a Heart Stabber. And then Blackstone's Twilight could answer Blossoming Tortoise. We're gonna take potentially six here. So this adding up and there's a Vine Stalk we have to worry about as well. So I may not have time to deploy Roaming Throne first before jumping with a Heart Stabber. So yeah, what's my plan next turn? Probably keep Massacre Girl on defense. And let's say I trump, I'm at six. I wouldn't be able to take out both Siren and Tortoise. So maybe then I am better off playing Roaming Throne and passing. Although at three life, I don't know if we can survive the Vine Stalk attack. I'll take it for now. They can shrink down Massacre Girl into a 3-3 with the Vine Stalk. Although it can still maybe line up favorably. Alright, there's a 6-6 Vine Stalk thanks to the Tortoise. Opponent not crewing the Schooner, so they have other planes. Yeah, crewing the Schooner probably would have worked out better for them. Get a bunch of triggers. Okay, and there's a Trata. So, let's see here. I could Black Suns for X equals 5. Assuming there's no negates, we can take out one of their creatures. Get back either a Massacre Girl or maybe a Heart Stabber if we need a Flyer. That could be alright. If I play a Trata attack, then our opponent might be forced to trump to prevent me from getting a pair of tutus. And then we still have some removal left. Yeah, kind of like that idea. So play a Trata. Could play it with Cavern. Just in case. And that connects. Getting a scout and an island. And then we can play Whipcracker, have Disfigure for Siren. And this is also a Reach creature. Okay. Maybe taking out Siren before they get a chance to crew Schooner was worth it, although I don't think Schooner is attacking into this board. Another Tortoise. So they get back the Vine Stalk. And milled another one. Tortoise and Siren attack. So Trata blocks Tortoise profitably. And then I could disfigure the Siren maybe before blockers, in case they have a negate. Which they did. Okay, now we can resolve a large Black Sun's Twilight instead. Could also fall to one. Do we have them on the way back? Not necessarily. Even with Black Sun's getting something spicy back. Okay, so Black Suns for five. Mm. 
opponent can cruise Kuna in response. But uh, yeah, that'll do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with uh, turn 2 Heartstabber, turn 3 Etrata. Sign me up. Can't quite cast a calling yet. Need an extra black source for that. And our opponent on dinosaurs. Okay, so the good news is that they probably won't have any flyers to get in the way of Heartstabber until they maybe play a Dracosaur, which we should be able to calling. But they might drop a turn to Hammer Skull. Yep. Well, Atrata still can trade for it potentially. And in the meantime, we get to cloak some creatures. Hatcher could be nice to eventually turn face up. And wow, opponent's got the fight rigging on turn three. So that's the dream. And they hit another Hatcher. Well, their draw couldn't have been much better. Do we trade for Hammer Skull? Could also just chump with a Hatcher. If I draw a Black Source next turn, I'm probably going to use the Culling on Hatcher. Yeah, I guess we just uh, take 7 for now. Our land enters tapped, unfortunately. Okay, so in that case, just get in with Heartstabber. Now, interestingly, the Whipcracker can destroy a Dinosaur Egg token. But for now, we'll just play another Heartstabber. Another Fight Rigging. Can they hit even bigger? They might have Gishoth in there. They keep piling onto the Hammer Skull, and another Fight Rigging is what they found. Well, those plus one counters are also going to add up. At least a Trata lines up all against a 3 3. So, yeah, it might be time to jump so we don't fall to 4. And we will get to trigger a Trata twice here now. Can cast Culling to take out the Hatcher, most likely. And then Whipcracker still gets to take out a token. Got a Rampaging Raptor and a Tyvar Stand. So good to know about. They might be able to protect their creature here. So we'll start with the Whipcracker, making sure to leave up double black. Target the dinosaur token, that works. Yeah, in that case I'll just take out the Hatcher now. If they had a Dracosaur, I imagine they would have cast it last turn. Rampaging Raptor is acceptable. And what else do they have? I guess now three counters on the Raptor. And the fourth fight rigging. So we can chump the Hammer Skull and then triple block the Raptor to take it out, or at least try to. Opponent considering leaving the Hammer Skull back as well. Okay. Yeah, I'll uh, set up a trade. Keep the Hatcher. Hope they don't have a Tyvar stand. But they would have had to top deck it. Now Performer could also synergize with the uh, Cloaked cards from Etrata. And now Roaming Throne is probably worth it. As we'll get to double Etrata's ability. We've got Mountain, 
Paleontologist, Cavern, and Forest. Thrill Seeker, ouch. Alright, GG's. Was unexpected out of a dinosaur deck, but now four counters from fight rigging. We'll get the job done. Or they can just sacrifice both creatures. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn to Performer could maybe enable a Tranta on three. Doesn't have any evasion, but being on the play can certainly help. And then Twilight synergizes well with our Massacre Girl. Opponent does have a Virtue to take out Performer. Play a Trata and hope that survives, at least at 4 toughness. It doesn't die to another Scorn. Okay. Opponent with a Desecrator, so a likely a uh, reenact the crime combo deck. Looking to discard something expensive next turn to reenact back. Now we do have Calling, but we can't cast it because we don't have double black, so I would have to use Twilight to take out Vohar. Could also play Roaming Throne Attack, and then we actually get to connect and uh, maybe make two tokens or uh, two disguised cards. I think it's still safer to take out Vohar. Because otherwise next turn they could already reenact the crime. And then a Cruelty of Gix so we can eventually turn face up. Alright. The Great Door can enable reenact the crime next turn. So now we're probably on a Roaming Throne. Trigger a Trata twice. But yeah, opponent could combo off next turn if they have reenact in hand. There's reenact the crime. So at least one of them's gone. Opponent discarding Atraxa end of turn. Maybe they have a cruelty of gigs to bring it back. Discards Ravona. So yeah, they must be on cruelty. Nope, just a virtue on the first target. Pays the ward. So our opponent's pretty far behind now. Get to attack all out. And then See what else we find. Another Cruelty, Breach the Multiverse. So they're definitely on the combo build. Alright, let's see if they've got a board wipe here. Would be quite painful. Maybe a reason to play Hardstabber instead of a Massacre Girl. Opponent uses Gaze. So they might have a reenact in hand. Could get back Cruelty, which in turn gets back Atraxa. Don't know if that's good enough. Alright, Breach the Multiverse, probably a better target if they can combo off here. But no, opponent does not have it and concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Two tap lands might slow down our curve a little bit, but we've got a keeper. Facing blue-white. At least Cavern of Souls will make our creatures uncomfortable. And I will try the Performer on two. And then if we get lucky, we can still play a Triton next turn. Put on force to get lost. Okay, play a Trata. And this one also taken out. Well, got a lot of uh, tokens here. 
opponent might have a lockdown to get rid of them eventually. And Jay's gonna try and mill us. At the very least, Jace enables Heart Stabber. I will clear. And there it is. So I play Heart Stabber. I'm gonna explore. And we can play a tap land, probably make it a Restless Reef. So Jay's just gonna shrink down the Heart Stabber now. If I go for Roaming Throne, there's a pretty high likelihood that our opponent plays a Sweeper next turn. But uh, yeah, I don't see any great alternatives. We can just explore a bunch, but that doesn't do much. Attacking with the Reef maybe exposes it to a Wandering Emperor. Although it could be an answer to Jace. And just play the Throne. This one they could counter since it's not an Assassin, which they do. Jace keeps plussing. Become subdued. Now Virtue Persistence at 7 mana could be exciting. So step 1 maybe... Explore. Find the Cliffs. Okay, so once again I think I play Roaming Throne over Animating Restless Reef. Play tapped cliffs, and then next turn we could play a Virtue of Persistence. We'll see if they have a card draw spell end of turn. Memory Deluge would be bad for us. And yeah, most sweepers here are gonna exile our creatures so we don't get to trigger Heart Stabber and draw two cards. And a Farewell is gonna exile the graveyard and our artifacts as well. Yeah, so now the Virtue does not look quite as appealing. Now I can mill myself with a Reef, although it kind of helps the opponent's game plan. But that might be the play, animate Reef, and then we can still play Whipcracker. And then we're trying to set up our uh, Virtue Persistence, as well as Black Sun's Twilight, although we're probably not going to have many opportunities to cast it on the opponent's creatures. You can be made to Another Bloodline Culling, not looking all that great. So sure, cast a Virtue. We'll see if this gets countered, or maybe a Get Lost can destroy it. A virtue resolves. And the march for seven, pitching a faithful mending. So the game continues. Our plans are beyond your comprehension. Now is probably the time to animate Restless Reef since we don't have anything else going on. And our opponent's going to Deluge to try and find some removal for it. At least they don't have mana for Wandering Emperor. Mill myself to enable Twilight. Also don't want to give the opponent more memory Deluges in the graveyard. But yeah, this game seems pretty over now. You just don't have enough pressure on the battlefield. And we're in the late game where the control decks shine. Our hand is a bunch of creature removal. And that's often going to be the case in best of one especially. If your deck is more mid-rangey in nature, you're inevitably going to end up with some cards that just are blank in the matchup or close to it. Alright, so Trata gives us a little bit of hope. Play Trata, attack. Probably see Wandering Emperor. If I keep a Black Sun's Twilight, I can get back a creature from the graveyards in response to Wandering Emperor trying to exile the Whipcracker. 
Yeah, maybe I should attack first. Alright, that works. So is this going to be an awkward second main Atrata, or just pass with Black Suns available? And try to upgrade the Whipcracker into something else. I guess it does say up to one, so we can always cast it for x equals 5 without needing to take anything out. So that does make it a little bit better here. So no Vein Rippers in the graveyard, so 5 is enough. Now Field of Ruin an answer to the Restless Reef. And dissipate our Twilight. Okay, well, I guess it's time for a Trata now. Can use Calling if they animate an Anchorage to block. But they might just have a Sweeper as their last card, or Deluge can find it for them. We just found a deserted beach. Can still give us an extra land in response to a Sweeper. So flashback Deluge, opponent likely finds, I want to say, Jace plus another board wipe. And there's a the board wipe. And no Jace, alright. So play Heartstabber, can still Twilight for 5. And we're almost at a fully powered Heartstabber. Which mana values are we missing? We've got 1, 2, 3, and 0, so I guess any 4-drop will do. They're gonna hit the Reef. One Swamp remaining, can have a look at the rest of our deck. Yeah, not too many exciting cards left. Massacre Girl unlikely to trigger, so maybe a Virtue could still save us. And Vein Ripper if they don't have a board wipe. Pass it back. Can answer the token pretty easily. So now we can target the token. And get back a Trata over another Heart Stamper. That works. And go to attackers. And I get lost hits a Trata. Yep. Opponent contemplating whether to animate the Anchorage decides not to. Play the Whipcracker. And then it probably doesn't hurt to explore a bunch. Massacre Girl. Probably a fine draw, although if I put it in the graveyard it does grow with a heart stabber. Yeah, close call. Maybe I should be more greedy and look for Virtue or... Uh, Vein Ripper. Right, another cavern could help. Could name Golem on this one. I believe we do have some Roaming Thrones left in the deck. I guess just a one. Yeah, still maybe worth it, even though if they play another Field of Ruin, they could blow up our cavern naming Assassin. Opponent does have another Deluge. So it's not looking good for us. Probably want to calling our own heart stabber in response to another board wipe that exiles. So we at least draw a card. And we found another massacre girl anyways. Can main phase it. And attack. Surprised we haven't seen Wandering Emperor so far. There it is. Now you've done it. 
So by removing our own heart stabber, we not only deny the life gain, but we also get to draw a card. Does Massacre Girl trigger? Does not only opposing creatures dying? Alright, found Roaming Throne, 20 cards left, so Jace is close to lethal here. And a flashback deluge should be able to find it. It's a pretty long drawn out game against control. That's usually how it goes. And our deck's definitely not optimized to beat it. Not sure if we can really adjust our deck too much in a best of three situation to have a good matchup against control. Even if we bring in some discard spells, our deck still inherently needs to play some creatures to get its synergies going. Massacre Girl not looking too great, although we finally have a creature in play we can target. I'm gonna play the Roaming Throne first to maybe draw two cards, even though that's playing into their mill plan. Another cavern can name Assassin. Make sure we tap our Golem Cavern. And let's try the Culling now, before I tap my Massacre Girl. And a minus five, probably over creature tokens, getting minus two. All right, so we get to draw two. Surprised we got even this far. But our opponent's probably just waiting to put down a Jace and end our misery. They're gonna take seven. If we still had some performers left, we could hope to burn them out. Deluge, this is number three. So they've probably seen their entire deck by now. They can even flash it back. So if they don't have double Jace in hand by now, I would be shocked. They might also have the Teresian Mindbreaker that they can discard with Faithful Mending. Although interestingly, Culling is an instant speed answer to the Mindbreaker. So we can prevent them from milling half our library. So what sweeper is going to be next? Will it be Sunfall? Will it be Farewell? Opponent gets rid of a lockdown. And there's Jace, so it's probably just double Jace here. Two millers for 30. Two cards remaining. And another Jace. Alright, that'll do it. GG's. And a minus two to mill three. Opponent with 16 cards left. There was a chance we could have milled them out as well. But uh, yeah, that'll do it. And get to untap. Opponent with a Wandering Emperor. Still had all these. And they don't get to gain any life on my watch. Okay. Well, this one took a while to play out, but gotta throw in the occasional control matchup just to showcase why they usually don't make the cuts since they take up half the video. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. What do we think of our opener? Yeah, it's alright. We can cast our spells. And then if we pick up a Trata, that's great. Massacre Girl would be good. Well, let's see what we're facing. Forest into a Seed of Hope. I see, a Slime Against Humanity deck. Okay, so wanna save the Whipcracker to take out a token. Play with Fire takes out Performer. And a Roots finds another land. Ooh, nice Massacre Girl. So I could just pass with Bloodline Calling available. Yeah, maybe I should just play the Whipcracker since I've got another removal spell lined up. And it's going to be a while before I, I get to deploy it here. So 3-3 three, three Slime. Can offer the trade after playing Massacre Girl. And 
then Roaming Throne can double the ability as well. I guess it could have been worth it to just hold Whip Cracker until after we play Roaming Throne. Uh, this attack implies another play with fire, I suppose. I'll take it. And another slime. Ooh, a Tracta was a nice draw. Although maybe I still play Roaming Throne first, and then next turn, Culling draws me two cards, which likely draws me a land for a Tracta. Whipcracker happy to jump in front of the smaller token, so we don't expose Roaming Throne to a burn spell. And now Massacre Girl gets to trigger twice. Another Whipcracker is excellent. So we're in a pretty commanding position. Opponent might be playing red for Arcane Bombardment, I guess, so they can eventually start copying their slime tokens. But this is going to be pretty devastating. Whipcracker take out two tokens. And then Etrata with two assassins ready to attack means four cards face down. Well, who knew we had a good Slime Against Humanity matchup? And yeah, as predicted, Arcane Bombardment, one of the face-down cards. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We're missing a Trata, but otherwise we've got a functional hand. Turn 1 Ashnod. Could just disfigure it right away. Let's just get the tap Lounge in play first. And then we're happy to put a Heart Stabber in front of it next turn. Another Death Touch creature. So this is 4 mana to transform, I guess we'll block now. If that works. And picked up a Cavern of Souls. Okay, maybe play this one face down first since we don't have much else going on. A Massacre Girl would be pretty nice with this hand. Shield Roots next can take that out. Won't be able to turn this face up unless I take two damage. Yeah, that's probably worth it. So, can I uh, play the cavern? Turn this face up. And calling on Shield Roots. Invasion of Innistrad, taking out our performer, okay. Currently at 3 mana values in graveyards, this figure can make it 4, and a roaming throne was a good draw. Play it, keep up this figure. And now if we draw Massacre Girl, we could potentially draw multiple cards per removal spell. Opponent's gonna just straight up murder a roaming throne. Fair enough. I guess we'll take out Ashnod. So now with the hard stabbers powered up, and we found a Trata. So that's exciting.
this figure can still maybe clear a smaller blocker. And Triton's gonna eat a removal spell. To be expected. And a Skull Dweller's next. Can disfigure it now, but if we draw Massacre Girl, it's better to wait. And we found another Atranta, perfect. And get to connect. And get a Swamp. Pass it back. Invasion of Innistra to take out Atranta once again. Nope, goes for Heart Stabber. Don't mind that. Get to draw a card. And then we've got plenty of ways to clear the Skull Dweller. Start with a Virtue, maybe. Making sure we leave a blue and black for Atranta's ability. And another Swamp. Could actually uh, use this ability just to ramp out our Virtue. Yeah, sure, since we don't have Lethal on board. Another Swamp. Play Virtue. And then next turn we could get back Roaming Throne to trigger Atranta several times. Opponent falls to one, and that leaves him dead on board. Alright, so we got to see our Assassins in action, and while it's definitely a more casual deck that I would not recommend for the ranked ladder, it's pretty fun and it's got some surprising synergies, like most of our creatures working with Roaming Throne, and uh, even having the Performer to synergize with Etrata cloaking cards, so we can maybe deal a ton of damage to close out the game, so that can also come up. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!